Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Jake Strand. And I'm Tracy McRae. In 2017, for the first time, the number of women enrolling in United States medical schools exceeded the number of men, according to the data from the Association of American Medical Colleges. While that number of women becoming physicians has increased, the challenges they face haven't changed. Common frustrations for women in medicine include gender bias and feeling like they must choose between career advancement and starting a family. Here to discuss is Dr. Susan Mochler, an anesthesiologist at Mayo Clinic who's designing a course about how to enhance the experience of women in medicine. Welcome to the program, Dr. Moshler. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here to talk about women in medicine and certainly our course. Well, Dr. Moshler, you're an anesthesiologist by trade. What led you to do research on women in medicine? What sort of personal experiences or research experiences led you to this place? Well, it's interesting. I do not come from a family of medicine, but from my own experiences as a child, I was interested in pursuing medicine. And I never thought otherwise that I wouldn't be able to do both, have a family and become a physician. And during my anesthesiology training, uh, women are approximately 25 to 30% of anesthesiologists. And coming off of maternity leave, I was left with a lot of situations where I was trying to find a mentor just for some answers how to logistically do both things. And I started finding mentors within my own specialty, across specialties. And at times when I felt alone, I realized that many other women were going through these same Mm -hmm. things. And so how could I mentor people? And also, how could I find the resources I needed to be successful? Is it, it's not unique to medicine, but how is it different for women in medicine? I think for one thing, If medical students go straight through training and residency, the reproductive years are right during that time of extensive work hours. Residencies are capped at 80 hours a week, but yet 80 hours is a lot, particularly can be taxing when, such as in my experience, I was pregnant during residency, fellowship, um, on call, and then to have a baby, go on leave, and come back from maternity leave to you know, being um, on call, going home, taking care of a newborn, and then trying to figure out just basics of childcare and such. Um, we don't work normal hours per sure. se. From being uh, being a mother aside, what are challenges that women face when they pursue a career in medicine? I think uh, there are several and uh, many opportunities, but for one determining what specialty to go into. A lot of times people, when they're choosing a career, they they look for a mentor or someone that reminds them of themselves. And women are underrepresented in certain surgical subspecialties, other subspecialties, and certainly at leadership positions. So identifying someone to whom they can um, go to for insight um, can be a struggle. So just identifying mentors um, as well as different opportunities Um, between men and women vary. We know that women are less likely to have leadership positions, chair positions. Um, And so taking those things into consideration in ways to also intentionally mentor women um, can be useful. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that that I was struck by in in our previous conversations and thinking of some of the research you've been working on is, you know, we have um, not been able to figure out how to make sure that there are um, good opportunities for everyone. So it's not just that it's not about putting one group above another, but it's making sure the opportunities are equal so people can experience those those positions as they would based on their interests and skill set. And one of the things that I was struck by in our previous discussions is this concept of um, if you have a group um, of clinicians who um, need to publish, need to give uh, academic other academic uh, presentations, if we're talking about an academic specialty, but you don't have an infrastructure to support them, then you're never going to get people in leadership positions to make different choices, Mm. potentially, or different changes, or even just reflect the workforce that you've established. I'm curious what sort of research you're working on uh, from a mentorship position, because I know that's a a big area. Mm -hmm. So I I think um, we have looked at the subjective mentorship within our own department and as well as across other medicine and subspecialties. And I think, for the most part, there's a lot of mentoring that happens in early stage, but then mid-career people feel 
like they're less mentored. And that's particularly important to get those people from a mid-career associate to full professor, for example, in academics. So I think being very intentional in aligning uh, mentors and mentees and career goals, but also identifying sponsorship. And that's the other part, not just giving advice, but by sponsorship saying, here's a speaking opportunity, here's a paper, and intentionally getting a diverse uh, pool to those opportunities. So you do see that getting better as time goes by? Um, I think that there are a lot of grassroots <laughs> efforts happening, and it's fantastic. I'm very lucky to be part of a, we call it a book club, but a cross-specialty group of women who have really mentored each other. I um, have multiple men who have been great mentors to me, um, and I needed that because there is a very, pain medicine is about 20% women. Mm -hmm. So without them, I would I have a limited pool. And so I do think we're being more intentional. We're gonna do a speed mentoring session in our department, uh, specifically to try and find mentors um, with whom you kind of naturally align and jive to have a more successful long-term um, relationship. Well, tell us about the CME course that you've developed. Yeah, I'm uh, very excited. We, my, uh, Dr. Anjali Bagra is my co-director and she's from internal medicine. And so together we are, um, we presented the idea to our department and division chairs who all were very supportive, both men and women. And we are looking to bring in not just institution, but also some national leaders in gender equity, business um, skills, self, um, or negotiating. Women are less likely to negotiate for themselves. Um, communication strategies. Women are less likely to speak up in meetings. How do you get your point across? Um, wellness, resilience, a, a myriad of topics. And we have great speakers, Dr. Sharon Hayes, um, the leader of diversity and inclusion here at Mayo Clinic, as you know, um, Dr. Amy Williams, the chair of uh, medicine. And so we're really excited to have experience both clinically, leadership-wise, across specialties, academic, et cetera. It, you know, I'm, I'm so glad to see these efforts taking place. One of the things we, we see in the private sector is people realize that, um, you know, again, if you can't make your workforce diverse and uh, appeal to people across the spectrum, you're going to have a business problem because you need you need people to be able to do the work that you're trying to grow into. And medicine is no different. And so, you know, we think about the um, if we're looking at who are going to be the next generation physician, it's not just all men; it's men and women. So, how do you make your workplace um, really receptive and supportive of everyone as they come out of different backgrounds and, and different training experiences and different family relationships? Well, I would imagine, like we said in the intro. In 2017, the number of women enrolling in medical schools exceeded the number of men. So I would imagine this might be a problem that even that point alone will help correct it. Mm -hmm. I think certainly the um, not just our recruiting um, into residencies and specialties, but also reflective of our patient populations that we're seeing, as well as recruiting into um, studies, women, underrepresented minorities, age, um, that we want that to be more diverse in all aspects. We've been talking about women in medicine with Mayo Clinic anesthesiologist, Dr. Susan Moshler. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Moshler. Thank you for having me. That's our program for this week. 